Hello, hello Revelation Wellness family. It is so exciting to be with you today. My name is Kelly Schaefer and I am a Revelation Wellness instructor from Platoon 26 and I'm a Rev educator. I live in New York and I have a ministry through my church called Revelation Wellness Made Well, uh, where I'm a fitness teacher, gospel preacher, uh, and it's just a joy to chat with you today. So if you're joining us, uh, say hello, give us a little comment. That's how we know that everybody's here and ready. It's our mic check one, two, one, two moment. So let me know that you're here. Um, and I would like to know where you're watching from and your favorite place to be. So write that in the chat, where you're watching from and your favorite place to be. That might not be where you're watching from. So it's really like, if you could be anywhere right now, where would you be? What's your favorite place? It might be where you have your quiet time with the Lord. It might be your favorite place to go travel. My family and I just got back from a big trip to Florida, saw all the family, friends, all the things. Um, so just let me know that. And then once you've written where you're joining us from, and where your favorite place to be is, would you do me a favor and hit the share button? That helps us so much because we want as many people as possible to hear the message that the Lord is giving us today. So, hello, ah, St. Lucia. That's a place I haven't been yet, but I'll put it on my list. My list of places to be. Keep letting me know, everyone where you're from and your favorite place to be. And as people are joining us, um, they're kind of trickling in. I see you all. I want to tell you about instructor training. You might have gotten some emails or seen it on social media, but our next platoon, Platoon 29, is enrolling right now, and we're just waiting for you. We're waiting for you to join us. The last day to sign up for Platoon 28 is August 8th. But here's a secret, you don't wanna wait that long because June 26th, that's a week from today, is the last day for early bird pricing and it is a discount of $200 off of instructor training. I like a discount, everybody likes a discount, right? So you're gonna to wanna to get on that. So hello, hello. Um, just a little bit about my experience with instructor training. I went through training in the spring of last year, and that was only a few months after I first learned about Revelation Wellness. Heard the term Revelation Wellness for the first time, and within a few months, I jumped in. If you've ever read the Wellness Revelation book by Elisa Keaton, you'll know that she talks about two different types of people, those who obsess over their bodies and those who neglect their bodies. And for the most part, I was in a place, I was in the fitness world, and I was, for the most part, an obsessor. I was obsessed with this physical body and trying to make it as small as possible. And whenever there was a number on the scale or a size of jeans that I thought would make me happy, I would get there and then I would push the line, push the line, push the line. Um, and, and I wasn't happy. That, that goal of getting smaller um, was only making me um, more unhappy. But I also struggled with binge eating and emotional eating, and I was always running to food when things got hard. So I was on this weight loss, weight gain roller coaster for years and years, and Jesus kind of grabbed a hold of me and he said, you can't keep me over here and keep your physical life over here. Like, you've got to marry the two. And I knew that I had to bring them together. I had to bring Jesus into all of it, but I had no idea how to do that. And then a friend of mine started talking to me about Revelation Wellness, and um, she was going through instructor training at the time. And I believe the first time she said the term fitness teacher, gospel preacher, my jaw was on the floor, and I knew that God was calling me to instructor training. So. Don't miss it, Platoon 29, it is fully virtual. And one more thing that I wanna tell you about my experience with it was that I did have a little bit of FOMO about not going to the mountain for retreat, not having the big gathering. But what I did was I met with two other women 
and we had this little intimate gathering, but honestly, it was in those quiet, solitary moments with Jesus. It was usually very early in the morning. It was just me and Jesus and a cup of coffee, and that's where he did a mighty work and a mighty healing in the way I perceive my physical body and everything that all the junk that I had been going through all those years. And he did a mighty work and a mighty healing in the area that we're going to talk about today. So uh, I can't wait to jump in. Let me just see some of these places. Ireland, watching from China. I am so excited. We are all over the world. So I just want to pray for us before we get started with this message. So let's just take a deep breath in and exhale. Father, Father, you are good. And I just praise you for this time together. Thank you for this community. Thank you that your word will go forth to everyone through the internet. I thank you for social media and all of these things that the, these ways that we can reach people all over the world in all these different countries. God, I pray that your, mes your message, your words would go forth today and that everyone listening and everyone who listens to the replay will have a fresh revelation of God the Father, of who you are as our good Father who chooses us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I want to tell you a little story about my son, Lincoln. He just turned 12 yesterday, but when he was about two years old, the phase of time that my husband and I lovingly refer to as the mobile but irresponsible phase because it's, it is the most terrifying, right? When they can move around, but they don't know what's good for them. I was giving my son, Evan, a bath. Evan was about four. And so I'm turned towards him. My back is to the door of the bathroom. And we're just having a good time doing our bubble bath things. And in the corner of our bathroom at the time, we had this tall cabinet. It's taller than I am. And it has glass doors, big heavy drawers on the bottom. And on the very top, I've put all of these like fancy, decorative, cute, ceramic uh, vases and little knickknacks, right? So there's all this stuff at the top of the cabinet. And while my back is turned, I hear this loud crash. I mean, it's it is crash, 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 because it's glass and it is the ceramics dropping, dropping, shattering, and there's all this mess. And I look over and even though I heard all this noise, I see Lincoln, my two-year-old, under all of it. And he's not moving and I don't hear a sound from him. All I heard was that noise. I don't hear a sound from him. I'm scared to death. And I screamed, Vincent, get in here. Vincent's my husband and he ran in and he reached down and he moved the cabinet and he swooped up Lincoln and he brought him into the living room far away from all of the mess, right? Far away from all of the things that could hurt him and he brought him to this open space to make sure that he was okay and thank God he was. It was terrifying. And so once I got over the, the, the feeling of how scared that I was and all of this, I realized that when I called out for Vincent, my heart was crying out, he needs his dad. He needs his dad. And after seeing that beautiful example of a good, present, loving father, I started to realize I did too. I did too, and all these emotions came rushing in. I needed my father too. I realized how much I longed for a dad who would do that, who would reach down from on high, draw me out of deep waters, bring me out into a spacious place because he delights in me, rescue me because he delights in me. That's how David describes God and God the Father in Psalm 18. But I didn't have that at the time because I didn't have a relationship with my heavenly father or my earthly father. Our theme this month for July, if you don't know, is sons and daughters. 
and something that's very real to me and may likely be very real to many of you is that just being someone's son or daughter doesn't guarantee that you feel loved or chosen or delighted in. One thing I remember from my childhood is a few times my mom would tell me that my dad was going to pick me up. He was going to pick up both me and my brother and take us somewhere. We didn't live with him at the time. My parents were divorced. It didn't matter to me how long it had been or how absent he had been in my life. I waited for my dad with such anticipation, with such a longing to see him. But a lot of times he just didn't show up because throughout my life, he chose many things over me. I did not feel chosen by him. In Isaiah and the Psalms, scripture says, my soul longs for you. And I believe we are born with a longing to be in a relationship with a father who chooses us. Dr. Frank Pittman calls this father hunger. Uh, he wrote an article and it was published in Psychology Today. The article was called Fathers and Sons and he wrote, life for most boys and for many grown men then is a frustrating search for the lost father who has not yet offered protection, provision, nurturing, modeling, or especially anointment. Anointment being chosen. We long to be deliberately chosen by a father. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 18.4 million children, one in four, live without a biological step or adoptive father in the home. That's enough children to fill up New York City twice over or Los Angeles four times over. And an analysis of fatherless daughter syndrome from an online quantitative study showed that without unconditional protection in tough times and the presence of a loving and affectionate father in times of accomplishments as children, women may develop a tendency to gravitate towards unhealthy relationships from the need to be loved and accepted. And according to a research article published in 2014, daughters are less likely to engage in risky sexual behavior when they have consistent contact and a sense of closeness with their dads. Here's a few more things I wanna share. The US Department of Health and Human Services says that fatherless children are at a dramatically greater risk of drug and alcohol abuse. And according to the National Longitudinal Study of Youth, children raised in a father absent home are two times more likely to suffer from obesity. So that's a lot of different things that I'm sharing with you. Why, why am I sharing all these things? It's because we have this longing and sometimes we don't realize it's for our dad. We don't realize it's the dad that we're longing for. And so we try to fill that longing with other things, sex, food, drugs, so many things. But here's some good news. And before I share this good news, I'm gonna ask you again, if you weren't here at the very beginning, would you hit share? Because again, I want so many people, as many people as possible to hear this good news that God has for us today. So hit the share button if you would. Here's some good news. As Pastor Louis Giglio puts it, even if the blessing of our dad escapes us, the love of our heavenly father can still find us. He can still find us. All this research shows that a father's absence can affect us in so many unfortunate ways, while a father's presence makes a positive difference in the lives of children and parents, everyone. And guess what? God is very aware of this. Not only is the ministry to the fatherless and the orphan a call from God that is cited in scripture 40 times, but in Psalm 68, 5, David refers to God as the father of the fatherless. I'm going to say that again. 68, 5, Psalm 68, 5, David refers to God as the father of the fatherless. 
We're going to spend the majority of our time together in John 14 today. And I, I'm going to encourage you to take your Bibles out or your Bible apps, whatever you use, um, and turn to John 14. Because throughout this entire chapter, there's a beautiful push and pull of longing and choosing. We see evidence of both a longing for a father and how deliberately God the Father chooses us. So I'm going to start in verse 1, John 14, verse 1 and 2. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? I'll stop there. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus is saying, I have prepared a place for you. And this is so important to understanding how much your heavenly father loves you and cares for you and chooses you. It's not like you showed up as an unexpected house guest and Jesus is scrambling to make room for you searching for some clean sheets. No, he's like a papa to be who has just gone through a long, grueling adoption process and has said, he is the one for me. She is the one for me. And when he gets word that he has been chosen right back, he lovingly, excitedly starts preparing a room just for you. He picked out the paint colors. He picked out the furniture and even the soft, warm blankets to wrap you up and snuggle you in. He went ahead of time to make sure that your room is ready and perfect. He knows about your father hunger. He knows about your need for protection, provision, nurturing, modeling, and anointment. In David Guzik's study guide for this chapter, he says, With love, expectant parents prepare a room for the baby. Love prepares a welcome. And that is what I believe Jesus is saying here. Out of his great love for us, he is preparing a welcome party for us. And friends, let's be real. Let's be very real for a second. He did go through a long, grueling adoption process. He sent his son to die for you, to redeem you so that he could adopt you. I can't think of anything more grueling than death on a cross. And in Ephesians 1, right before he says, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. It says he chose us before the creation of the world. That is a long process, a long, grueling process that he went through in accordance with his pleasure and will. That's how badly he wanted you. So he goes before us to prepare this place for us. And I want to take a moment to note that this is the same God of the Old Testament who went before the Israelites. When God goes before you, it's for good. It's for your good. This is the same God of whom it is said, the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. The Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light. Who goes before you on your way to seek out a place for you to encamp and to show you the way in which you should go. The Lord, your God, who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf. So he goes before you. And in the next verse, 14, 3, John 14, 3, it says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. He just wants to be with you. And he knows that deep down you long to be with him, that your soul longs for him. I think Heather Johnson is on here. And if you've joined Heather Johnson during the first week of our Sons and Daughters theme, you heard her read from Galatians 4. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. I love that. The spirit is longing for the father from within us, calling out to our Abba, our daddy, who adopted us, who took us 
by choice into a relationship with him. So let's go back to John 14, because I want you to see how this conversation continues of God's people saying, Father, I long for you. And God saying, I know, I know. And I'm right here. So in 14.8, we're skipping a little bit. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. The Greek word for enough here is archaeo. It's the same word used in 2 Corinthians when Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. So Philip is saying, show me the Father. It's all I need. It's all I long for. That will be enough. It's sufficient. All my longing will be satisfied. And his response back, get this. His response back, in John 14, verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And a little further down in verse 23, he says, Jesus replies, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. This excites me. This is beautiful. He is basically saying to you, as you love and long for me, I love and long for you and I will be with you. I choose you. You are mine. I am not going to leave you in your pain. I am not going to leave you as orphans. I will not leave you for this with this longing for a father unfulfilled. He doesn't leave us in our pain. He doesn't leave us in our mess. Like Vincent did with my son Lincoln, he truly does reach down from on high and rescue us because he delights in us. He's good. He's a good father. This is how Pastor Louis Giglio puts it. You are not forsaken. You are not an orphan. You are not alone. You are a child of God. He knows your name. You are his. You are his. When I was really young, my dad wrote a song about me. I didn't know about it until much later in life. And the only words I know are these. And for context, Angel is my middle name. You're my Kelly Angel. You're my heart's delight. Know your daddy loves you. I love you with all my might. And you'll see, you'll always be the one for me. When I was talking to Jesus about the message he would have me share with you all today, those four words came up a lot. The one for me. I know that when I say that's the one for me, what I'm saying is I choose that. I want that one to be mine. I choose it and I'm pretty sure I would choose it again and again and again. So the problem with that song my dad wrote is that as sweet as the words were because he didn't show me that he chose me, I can't say that I ever believed them. In the years between coming to Jesus and coming to Rev, God did a lot of work on my heart when it came to my dad but nothing quite as earth shattering as what he did during my instructor retreat last year. During a worship segment, while a song was playing, it was, I didn't hear the song. I know, I know now, I know what the song was, but I wasn't hearing those words. I was hearing the words of my dad's song being sung over me, except it was so clear that it wasn't my dad singing, but my heavenly daddy, my father, who delights in me, who loves me with all his might. I hadn't thought of that song in years, maybe a decade, but God used those words during that retreat to redeem some major pain. So if you are someone who didn't feel or doesn't feel chosen or loved by your dad, I believe that what Jesus wants you to know today, all of you to know today, is that you do have a father who chooses you. You are the son or daughter of a father who is leaning over the rails of heaven to say, that one, she's the one for me. He's the one for me. You're my sons and daughters. You're my heart's delight. 
Know that your daddy loves you. I love you with all my might. And you see, you'll always be the one for me. You'll always be the one for me. Let's pray. Father, I just praise you. I praise you for this message that you've given us. I pray that you touch hearts. I pray that you heal wounds. That God, these these numbers that I shared in the beginning, all these things about fathers who were or were absent from the home, kids who grew up in fatherless homes, that God, you would just move through the hearts of everybody listening, no matter what their relationship was with their parents or is with their parents, no matter their circumstance, no matter where they live, how they were brought up. I pray that they heard from you directly today that you are their good father who chooses and delights in them no matter what. God, you are good. You are a good, good father. And we just delight in being your sons and daughters today and every day. We love you. You are crazy amazing. We honor you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Friends, I absolutely meant what I said about God doing a mighty healing in this area, like I mentioned the, the body area, but also in this area uh, throughout my instructor retreat, I learned so much about wholeness and forgiveness and how much my father in heaven loves me. So before we end our time together, I want to remind you one more time in case you joined a little late uh, about our next instructor training. Platoon 29, it starts soon. August 9th is the kickoff date. And the last day to sign up is August 8th. But again, you don't want to wait till then. Early bird pricing ends next Tuesday. So what you'll want to do is download a packet. Uh, there will be a link for that. Download a packet. There will be all the information you could possibly need. There we go. Anjanette's on it. They download a packet, all the information you could possibly need, and then you can get on a call with an enrollment advisor that we have. They just love to help you. And one little tidbit that I want to share about that, because I know that this is very real. Um, I was a little bit concerned. Um, I mean, I was excited to hear about early bird pricing because, again, everybody loves a discount. Um, but I was a little concerned about how I was going to pay for instructor training and through prayer god put it on my heart to do a fundraiser and um i fundraised the entire thing i uh i i raised um by the grace of god i raised every penny for instructor training so don't count that out you there's always a way there's always a way god makes a way okay amen so thank you for spending this time with me. If you didn't already, you still have an opportunity to share this video, especially if you know somebody um, who might be struggling in this area or someone who just simply needs to hear about their father who delights in them. I pray that this time was a blessing to you. I'll be in the page, in all the places I'll be going back and reading through your comments and answering any questions and getting to know you a little bit better um, but I just thank you and I'm praying for you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye.